iPadOS 17 just got an awesome new update. Here are the new settings we need to talk about. Let's dive in. So you're chilling on the couch with your iPad and you really want to show your friend that funny photo of your cat yawning. Let's swipe down from the middle of the screen. We're gonna open up Spotlight. And now I can just type cat, C-A-T. And then we get suggestions at the top. But if I scroll down, I can see a bunch of photos of cats here. And I'll tap on Shaka there. She's such a pretty girl. With Spotlight Search on iPad, you can quickly find whatever you're looking for. Apps, contacts, and yes, even that text in the message you got from an Apple employee complimenting your YouTube channel. What's even cooler is that you can summon Spotlight Search from anywhere, even from the lock screen when you're too lazy to go the whole nine yards and actually unlock your iPad. And in iOS 17, you can also search for settings. Let me search for auto lock. It's a lot faster way to get to where you want to go. I can tap on that and I have it set to never. Bonus tip, don't set your iPad to never. We set it like that for the screen recordings that we do for these videos. It's useful, intuitive, and a little bit like showing off, just like your cat wearing sunglasses. In iPadOS 17, iPad users can now officially be late to the party with lock screen customizability. Last year, iPhone users got the ability to customize lock screens, and now iPad users can too. Using it is simple. Press and hold on the lock screen, and now I'm editing it. Then you could swipe to the right and hit the plus icon to customize it to your liking. We're not going to go into a huge amount of depth here because we have a whole video that goes over everything you can do. But some of these are actually pretty cool. Next, let's talk about a setting in Apple Music that you might think is cool, crossfade. It's the setting that makes your tracks blend into each other like a smoothie of sound. But here's my hot take. You might actually wanna keep crossfade off. Let's open the settings app and scroll down to music. Tap on that and then check this switch out next to crossfade. And here you can choose how long you want it to be anywhere between one and 12 seconds. Crossfade can be cool for certain playlists, but it can also be kind of a buzzkill. Imagine you're deep in the emotional finale of a power ballad, and suddenly Crossfade ushers in a peppy pop song, like a clown at a funeral. My recommendation is to give Crossfade the silent treatment by turning it off and keep your musical experience just as the artists intended. But there is a good type of Crossfade. Maybe you're not a member, but you wanna fade into being a channel member to get free PDFs and free walkthrough guides of all the settings we talk about in this video and others. Well, click the join button below to join our channel. Next, let's dive into one of those I wish I knew this sooner moments on your iPad, turning off notifications while screen sharing. Picture this, you're presenting to your boss or heaven forbid, your in-laws, and suddenly notifications pop up, revealing your late night online shopping habits or your penchant for watching cat videos. Not exactly the professional or family-friendly image you were going for, right? So here's the step-by-step -step guide on how to avoid those red-faced moments. Let's head to the Settings app and tap on Notifications. Next, tap Screen Sharing. I'll turn it on just to show you what it looks like. Allow notifications while using SharePlay or screen mirroring. To save yourself from potential embarrassment or having to explain why you're getting notifications from Hot Cheese Deals Weekly, just flip the switch to turn it off. Next, it's time to venture into the world of scheduled summary. And trust me, this is a journey worth taking. We'll head to settings and we're already in notifications. So I'll tap back to notifications and I'll tap on scheduled summary and I'll turn the switch on. We get a pretty little explanation of what it does. I'll just tap continue here. And first you can choose which apps you want in the summary. You're going to see a lot more apps here than I am with a lot more options and a lot more notifications. But what I love about this is that it will show you which apps are the most annoying and those are the ones you should choose to add to the summary so they stop interrupting you. Let's pretend that tips was actually driving me crazy here. I'll tap on that and also tap on FaceTime. Actually, I won't do that because I do want to know if somebody's trying to FaceTime me, right? And I'll try the health app here. And I'll say add two apps. And I like the default summary times of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Turn on notification summary and there you go. And the bonus in here is that you get to see an ordered list of which apps are annoying you the most. 
By flipping this switch, you're telling your iPad, hey, let's group these notifications together and deliver them at a time when I'm mentally prepared for them. Shall we? Next, we'll explore a new feature that's like a bodyguard for your eyeballs that makes sure you have enough personal space, the screen distance feature in screen time. I'm in the settings app, so on the left side, I'm gonna come up here to screen time and tap on that. And then on the right, tap on screen distance here and I'll tap continue to set it up. At first, why is this fancy schmancy feature necessary? Well, snuggling up too close to any screen or even a thrilling page turner of a novel might crank up your risk of myopia, especially for children and just plain old eye strain for the rest of us. The screen distance feature on iPad uses the true depth camera, the same whiz bang tech behind Face ID. If you don't have an iPad with Face ID, you may not see this feature. This clever camera is like a measuring tape. It senses if your iPad tiptoes closer than 12 inches to your face for too long. Next, let's talk about two features in music settings that can make your audio experience smoother and less like going to an elementary school band concert. Reduce loud audio and sound check. First, let's discuss how to tame those rowdy decibels with reduce loud audio. Let's head to settings. And this is something that's moved recently. I'll tap sounds on the left, scroll all the way to the bottom, and then tap on headphone safety. And this is where you'll see reduce loud audio and reduce loud sounds over a set decibel level. I can tap this switch to turn it on. 80 decibels as loud as a noisy restaurant, it says. If you're on a subway or you're traveling on a bus or on a plane, you might need it a little bit louder than that. Uh, you can safely go up to 85. You don't want to hang out at 90 or 95 for very long. So 85 might be a good choice for most people. Although I am as big of a hearing safety proponent as anyone. The way this works is you've got your song with little spikes in the volume. And what this does is it takes the, the spikes, which may or may not actually be harmful, and squashes them. So the whole song sounds flatter. So I personally leave this off. I think it sounds better when it's off and I'm careful to monitor my own hearing safety. And now for you casual listeners who like your music like you like your coffee, perfectly balanced, let's talk about sound check. This is in the music section of settings. I'll scroll down on the left to music. Just went kind of fast there. Give you time to catch up. Tap on music and then check out this switch here next to sound check. This is like having a thoughtful roommate that turns down the music when it gets too loud. No more volume roller coasters between tracks. This is going to make your experience with music sound a little bit flatter. And that's why I leave this off. I personally think that the way songs are mastered, especially in Apple Music, uh, is the way they're supposed to be. So I always leave this off. Next, we'll talk about iCloud recommendations and how they can help you to clean up your digital life on your iPad with iPadOS 17. Back to the settings app, I'll scroll all the way to the top here on the left and tap on my name, or in this case, John Upphone. Then I'm going to tap on iCloud. And then this is what we're talking about, this recommended for you section. Tap on that. Now, you might see a lot of stuff in here. The one that I pay attention to is delete inactive backups, which I can now tap review backups on. Select this and choose delete and then delete an old backup. A lot of people end up with backups from their iPhone 5 and their iPhone 8 because they never restored from it. So it's just been living in iCloud for all this time. And chances are you're never going to use that backup. So rather than paying Apple for more storage space, sometimes you can use this feature to save yourself some money. Thanks, Apple. Next, we're going to prevent some accidental Siri activations with this next iPhone tip. I apologize if I just activated your Siri right now. In the settings app, I'll scroll down on the left and go to Siri and search. Tap on that, then tap listen for at the top. And right now, mine is configured to listen for either Siri or Hey Siri. If you are getting a lot of accidental activations, just choose Hey Siri, or you can turn it off completely. I personally think that it's gotten better. Thanks, Siri. 
I personally like to leave it on Siri or Hey Siri. It makes it easier. I've gotten used to it. At first I was only saying Hey Siri, but then I got used to just saying Siri. Do you hear that, Siri? You know, it's like yeah. you, you try to talk to it, it doesn't listen. And, <laughs> and then yeah. Next up, we're gonna talk about Apple advertising. You might have noticed these strategically placed ads that pop up just when you are enjoying a nice scroll through the App Store or perusing the latest headlines in Apple News on stocks. But fear not, dear viewer, you have the scepter of control. Let's jump into the settings app, you guessed it, and tap on privacy and security. Then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom, choose Apple advertising, and I have personalized ads turned off. A lot of people, when they turn this off, are afraid that all of a sudden they're going to see low quality ads. So they think, okay, I should leave it on. But the truth is that Apple doesn't let low quality advertisers into their ad network because Crest doesn't want to advertise alongside Joe Bob's Gambling Emporium because Crest is a toothpaste, it's family friendly. So Apple wants to cater to the big spenders. Next, let's delve into what our more privacy conscious fans are saying is the best new iPadOS 17 feature, iMessage contact key verification. This is like a secret handshake for your messages. In settings, I'll tap back to the main Apple ID page and scroll all the way down to the bottom and tap on contact key verification. What does it do? Think of iMessage contact key verification like sending a letter in a special magical envelope. When you write a message, it goes into this envelope which can only be opened by the person you're sending it to. This is because only you and your friends have the magic wands or keys that can open these envelopes. Now I'll tap this switch next to verification in iMessage to turn it on. Then I'll tap continue. I wanted to let you know that every Apple device you have that you use iMessage on has to be running a recent version of software for this to work. So you can't have an old version on your Mac with iMessage and then use contact key verification on your iPhone and iPad. Now, what if an evil wizard hacker tries to create a fake wand to spy on your messages? This is where contact key verification acts like a powerful spell that checks every single wand before it opens the message. When it spots a fake, it tells you, ensuring only those with the right magic keys or wands can read your messages. Now I can show the public verification code here and I can copy it. Now it's on the clipboard. To text someone this code, and this is public, I could send it to somebody else. Right now, the whole process is very manual except for the very first part of it. I think in the future, Apple will make it easier, but for now you have to call your friends and say like, hey, can you read your public verification code to me? And then like, okay, it's A-P-K-T-I-D-Y-M-X-M-J-U. You know, like nobody's got time for that. Next, another privacy, but also more of a battery issue in my opinion. Let's tap back to privacy and security and tap on analytics and improvements. Tap analytics data and you can see that a lot of data is actually always being collected about your iPad. And a lot of this is normal, but let me tap back here. And let's say you had share iPad analytics turned on and a whole bunch of these other ones turned on. Well, that's going to use your battery life collecting this data in the background and saving it. Is it a security risk? Maybe share with app developers could be, but I just like to turn it off. Save yourself some battery life. Wow, that one really doesn't wanna go off. Improve Fitness Plus. I just found a bug, people. You are gonna, because you're supposed to be able to just tap the switch. It's, it's like, no, you're gonna help improve it. Next, we need to stop apps on your iPad from tracking you across other apps and websites. Tap back to privacy and security and scroll up to the top, tap on tracking. Right now I have allow apps to request to track turned on. Chances are if you use your iPad more than I use this one that we only use for recording videos, you're going to see a bunch of apps in here. And you can go through and turn them off individually, which I would recommend, but I'm just going to turn off the switch at the top, and now apps can't even request to track you when you open them the first time. This is one area where Apple has gotten a lot better with privacy over recent years. Next, let's dive into the world of location services. Tap back in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and then tap on location services at the top. 
you're going to see a lot more apps in here than I have. And I just want to say that we're not crazy. You shouldn't turn off location services because GPS is one of the things that makes using your iPad so great. Some apps need your location to work, like Maps apps. But as you scroll through your list of apps, mine's relatively short, watch out for always, which is the, the worst word ever for location services, because that means the app can always track your location even when you're not using it. If you do see an app where always is selected, tap on it and choose a different option like while well, using this app. And unless you're using a Maps app, I'll tap into Maps, turn off this switch next to precise location because the more precise your iPad identifies where you are with GPS, the more battery it uses. Tap back to location services in the top and then tap on system services. Rather than going through all of these and taking forever to join our channel, get the free PDF guide, I'm just gonna turn off everything right here except for compass calibration because that's what allows you to see a little pointer in the Maps apps so you know what direction you're going. I'm also going to turn off, let's see, HomeKit, motion calibration of distance. Turning off location for networking and wireless may affect Wi-Fi and Bluetooth performance. True, if you're traveling to other countries where Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are configured differently. Tap turn off, it's still gonna work. Setting time zone. Share my location, suggestions in the search, system customization, significant locations. Turn that off, turn it off. Okay, product improvement. iPad analytics, running in traffic, and improved maps is off because Apple Maps is kind of a lost cause. And if you're looking for a more in-depth video on these settings and why you should turn them off or leave some on, we'll drop a card above where you can click on that card to watch the video and we'll put a link in the description too. Next, let's conquer one of the biggest battery drain culprits out there, background app refresh. And it lurks in the dark corners of your iPad settings. I'll tap general on the left side of settings here, and tap on background app refresh. As Apple says here in the tiny text, it allows apps to download new content in the background even when you're not using them. Hence the extraordinarily clever name, background app refresh. Well, this feature sounds rather handy dandy and can eat through your battery because your iPad's doing more stuff in the background. So if you wanna put your apps on a diet so they stop feasting on your battery life when you're not looking, here's how to do it. I don't recommend turning off background app refresh at the top. Instead, just go through and ask yourself which apps need to download new content when I'm not using them. And if stocks doesn't, if podcast doesn't, if maps doesn't, turn it off. They're still gonna work. It's still gonna download the content for the app only when you open it and only when you open it. Boom, you just saved battery life. You just saved your privacy. Maybe you just saved the day. You're a superhero. Now go out, tap that subscribe button wow. and enjoy your iPad with extra power and extra privacy because you've earned it. Thanks for watching. Watch this video next. You have the scepter of control. Scepter, is that how you say that word? Scepter? It's the thing that the, the stupid king holds. I just wanna make sure I said it right. How else would you say it? I'm skeptical. Scepter, sounds like. Scepter, scepter.